Chip kick. Grubber Grub kick. Being there. 40-20. 40 40-20, 20. 40, 20, nice. Bomb. Bomb. Oh. Doesn't matter. Give another skill. Uh, tackle. Nice tackle. Good boy. Tackle. Right. Good. Yes. Block tackle. Block tackle. Legs. Legs tackle. Uh, covering tackle. Covering tackle. Uh, dominating tackle. Dominating tackle. Another skill. High tackle. High tackle. Another skill. These are beautiful. <laughs> See? Ippy brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Evasion, yes, good. Types of evasion. Step. Step. Swerve. Swerve. Bzz, no matter. We're going. You get the bit of handle that, don't you? Now, if you think about the skills of our game, we're, we're going to teach skills. There's a million of them. Does that make some sense? Right. The really crucial thing about that is, is you need to know your skills. To know the skill is really important. Not the name of it, but actually to know the skill is really important. And there's a there's a movie called. Lock, Stock and Smoking Barrels, is that the one? Do you know the movie? Yeah. Again, this will be on TV again. Fantastic line in that movie. Wow, one of the things I really enjoy. There's a, they're, they're, those who don't know the movie, it's a gangster movie. Comedy gangster movie. And they're preparing a heist, you know, rob some jewels or something like that. Anyway, one of the blokes comes back. And, and the boss says, well, what about that? And he says, well, I assume that that... You what? I assume that... And his quote is, uh, assumption is a mother of all fuck-ups. So you can't assume anything. Understand that? So here's a little exercise. With the guy beside you or the person beside you, I want you to uh, do this for me. I want you to write down the three dot points for uh, standing up from that very comfortable chair you've got. Here's the skill of standing up. From the chair you've got, what are the three dot points about the skill of standing up from there? Talk to the next person beside you. What are the three dot points about that skill? How do you, how do you get out of that chair? And stop. That's enough. Ooh, that's enough. Ooh, that's enough. Ooh, here we go. Ooh, that's enough. Instant exercise, yes? Because you actually start to think about, you know, you, you know, we all do that. So when you go and teach kids, we all assume they can catch and pass. Make some sense? We all assume that. But have you actually thought now about the skills you want to teach and the dot points you, got, you want to go back? So now we, we've got to make sure that we can perform skills under pressure. And that's, that's what this stuff is about. So if you're teaching skills, ah, you need to know the skills. You need to break down the components of the skills and then you need to put them in a situation where they can perform those skills under pressure. And that's, that's what teaching skills is about. Um, here's, here's some guidelines for teaching skills then. Th these are some, just some basic guidelines. Um, here's the first one. Um, expect full attention and get it. Um, when I coach um, and you've got a ball in your hand, <coughs> you keep the ball still. You, you watch me work around the players and I ain't talking if, if anybody else is talking. I'm not talking if anybody else is looking sideways. I don't do that. And if you've got a ball, you understand if players get a ball, they do this with a ball or this with a ball, whatever the story is, what are they thinking? Anything but you. Anything but you. So well, I talk with group kids and you know, work on camps, work on their own team, whatever the story is, you've got the ball between your feet or you're really disciplined just to actually hold the ball. Now I'm not the sort of thing I'm thinking, Gee, I'm holding the ball really good here all the time while he's talking, but that, 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 suit, that suits me. I don't expect full attention and get it. I won't, I won't talk unless I've got that. And I can't compete with the aeroplanes or the pretty girls or the music or something, so I don't try. Um, so there's number one. Next little one here is, this is, this is a trap, this is us coaching again, and I'll make another reference about this, is um, we talk too much um, about providing insight and, and why, but sometimes you need to do that. We're going to do this because and then, then we're going on with life as quickly as we possibly can. But some insight sometimes helps with that stuff rather than, uh, than doing it. The next little part about this is that whatever skills you're teaching now, if you do one skill at a time, is, is really important. And then even more important is a little subset underneath that is that you actually do one part of a skill at a time. Just, I just talked to you about this. If I ask you about swimming, um, who, who can swim breaststroke legally? So you're in a swimming pool and can swim breaststroke legally because you get your two feet going the right way and you get your arms going that way. Can you do that? Who, and I'm not, just not being critical, it's really, uh, it's really common. Who, who's got one foot that goes the right way and the other foot goes the wrong way? No, you don't understand what I'm saying? Yeah, well, that's what happens anyway. Like, it's, it's, like the breaststroke is a symmetrical stroke and you, and you kick with your feet and your feet have got to be symmetrical. What happens with lots of people when they swim is they'll have one foot will go nice like that, but the other one will get a sort of a side stroke, kick into it and go that way. So it gets, gets a bit of a side stroke. So, um, the thing about that is if you're going to teach breaststroke, there's a whole host of things you've got to teach, but one of them is a kick. 
And so you actually got to teach the kick and get the kick right before you worry about something else and something else and something else. Does it make a bit of sense? And so what you're doing is you need to get the kick right. So if in breaststroke, that's the skill we're trying to do, but we need to get that part right. And if we're focusing on the kick, we again can't be talking about some kid's arms or his ears or his nose or something else. Does that make a sense again? So if, you, if you're going to teach skills and you want something to be taught, you've got to be really specific about what you're going to teach because you've got your dot points, and I'm going to teach that point there, and that's the point I'm going to focus on, and I'm going to ignore other stuff until that, we've mastered that and got around that. Once we've done point one and dot two and dot three, and we're going to dot four, that's your focus. Sometimes you can go back and touch on those because they should be, do, be able to do those because we've covered those dots, but now we get to dot four, we should be able, we should be able to focus hardest on that. Again, I'm making some sense here. Just not try and teach everything at once, but try and be really specific with what you're teaching and how you go about your business. So, and then one part of a skill at a time. Um, the next little thing is practice. Um, practice makes perfect, yes? Perfect practice. Perfect practice. Practice makes what? Permanent. That's what practice does. Practice makes permanent. Um, what you need to do is make sure the things you practice are good because you're actually putting things in a muscle memory. And the harder it is, the longer, you, the longer you breaststroke kick with one leg like that and the other one goes a bit funny, the harder it is to make both feet go the same way. The harder it is. So what practice does is practice makes permanent. The wonderful thing about it is that practice makes permanent. Because the more you practice, the more likely it is to stand up under pressure of a game situation. So it is vital to practice and practice. Not just do something once and think that's done. Because it's not. We need to practice and revise and revisit and go back and get a bit of Irish logic about it. So as we do this, I think a thousand times, not become bored. Does that make a bit of sense as well? So you know, practicing is really important what you do. And, and this, is, this is really crucial is you need to practice left and right. Uh, you know, some of our games, skills you'll do, and, and you'll practice left shoulder and you'll practice right shoulder defensively. You'll pass, practice, some, practice passing to your left, you'll, pass, you'll practice passing to your right. You can't, you can't not do those things. They're, they're, they're crucial about how you go about your business. Uh, and your good players, your really good players, will kick left and right. Um, you know, you, you can't play Aussie rules, can you, without being able to kick left foot and right foot. So, you know, we, we don't kick well enough sometimes. We don't practice, we don't practice all our skills enough. And kicking is one that, that, that we suffer a bit of. Um, but practicing left and right is a really important thing. This is, this is running a drill. This comes out of um, Brian Canavan. This is Brian Canavan. His, his theory about this was um, to, uh, to run a drill or run an activity... The first thing you need to have first up is group organisation. What does that mean? Yep. Who's doing the drill? Who's doing the drill? Yep. Yeah, you, know, you need to have the markers out. Yeah, the markers out. Four guys behind that line. Four guys behind that line. Yeah, you know, you're around there. Whatever the story is. So you get your groups organised. So you run the drill. Get get your group organised exactly where you want them to be. How many people in each line and what line and where you go. Uh, the second thing he tries to do then is um, is get the mechanics of the drill going, which means that you have to run around here. You run around there, you go around this way, and you go that way, and whatever. So does that make a bit of sense? So here's the organisation. Here, the organisation of that drill is: we want you all lined up behind the marker. And then we want you want to do is we want you to do a uh, you call it a scissor play, drop play, wedge play. What would you call that? Give me a name. Drop. Sorry. An axe play. Whatever it is. Yep. So what we want this bloke here to do is we're going to run up here. We want to run across here, wedge that bloke, axe that bloke underneath there. What happens then? He goes around that marker. Goes back down that line, this bloke goes around that marker, he's got that line there. Does that make some sense? That's your organisation of how you want the drill, where you want them to run. So you've got the, you the, the organisation set up, then you've got the mechanics of the drill. You run there, you run there, and away we go. Um, how much coaching's happened at this point in time? Of skill coaching? None. That's exactly right. Because now is when we actually can go and coach. Once, once they've got the organisation worked out and they've got the mechanics worked out, then you can go and teach. What happens if you do it the other way around? What happens if you go, organisation, teach, mechanics? They forget, 100%. They forget where they're going, where they're going to do, where they run, all that sort of stuff. So the important part is get that out, get, that, get the activity as soon as you possibly can. Get it, get it going, tick it over, go that way and that way. So the people then go, organisation, mechanics, then you do the teaching. And the teaching part in here is what happens. Um, when you're level one, you'd have done um, DEPE, yes? Yep, we're all familiar with that. Does anybody not understand the concept of that, what DEP stands for? Please let me know if you haven't heard it before. Yep, no, no, it's right. DEP stands for this. Uh, the D stands for demonstration. Uh, the E stands for explanation. The P stands for practice. And the E stands for evaluation. 
So that, that, that same method that, that you use to, to, to teach kids. Demonstrate something, yes? Um, some quick dot points that you know about to explain something. Um, then you go and practice, and then you go and evaluate. Something really crucial about demonstrations. Anybody? Do them correctly. Go and do them correctly. Very, very good. Wonderful. Here's my demonstration of a handstand. You ready? I haven't done a handstand since 1953. Here we go. Tell me about that demonstration. Pretty ordinary. Pretty ordinary, 100%. Can I just tip you up on this? The older I get, the more ordinary my demonstrations become. Because I thought I could, but now I can't. Do you understand that? So we're going to demonstrate something to your kids or your players. I don't demonstrate anything anymore. I ain't good enough. Too old, whatever. So now I'm struggling.